There you are. Welcome back. The Flash Forge Creator Pro is what started me on my 3D printing journey way back Christmas of 2014. And now Flash Forge has themselves an update. The Flash Forge Creator Pro 2. This is an updated version of that machine that melted polymers for me back starting in 2014. How does it stack up? Let's find out. The Creator Pro 2 sports uh, a look and feel that's very similar to the original Creator Pro. It is a fully enclosed 3D printer. It does have a hat it can wear for higher temp materials. It does have dual spool holders on the back and there is a smallish rectangular shaped build plate on the inside. Both sport 0.4 millimeter nozzles going to 240C and both sport a rectangular heated bed that'll go up to 120C. The build volume on the new one is slightly smaller than the old one with X at 200 millimeters, Y at 148 millimeters, and Z or Z at 150 millimeters. The Creator Pro 2 right here does bring some updated tech to this slightly antiquated design. You've got a 4.3 inch touchscreen right up front and inside an IDEX motion system. Let's not beat around the bush. Does it work? Yes, get over there. Well, print quality is okay from this machine. Uh, I, I have done some prints, a mess of prints. They look okay for the most part. The IDEX system uh, works as advertised, which is also a plus. Why, why am I being hesitant? What's the catch here? Just say it. Flash Forge advertises this 3D printer as having a bed that has an anti-scrape design on it. I would take that to mean anytime you print something on this machine, the models pop off when they're done or, or they're easily removed when done, not requiring a scraper. This is not my experience with this machine. In fact, that bed held onto prints as if the prints were fused to it. We have a problem. During initial testing of the Creator Pro 2, Ben was still here and Ben said, hey Joel, do you wanna come over and try to take a print off this machine? And I was like, sure, why not? I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Okay, fine, fine, I'm cool, I'm fine. After that happened, I honestly just put the machine away because I was sick and tired of it and I just didn't want to deal with it at all. Fast forward a few months and I just, I, I didn't remember this being as bad as I thought it was and I thought, you know, I should really give this a go. So I set it up on my bench and I got to work. And? You know, first I did level the print bed and even though the thumb screws are extremely hard to get to and turn reliably, uh, I, I was able to get a good level on the bed. Next was calibration of the offset for the left extruder and the right extruder. Now in an IDEX system, because they're going to be printing on the same spots, you wanna make sure that the machine knows where the left extruder is at all times and the right extruder. And so you just calibrate that they know where each other's zero points are. And during calibration, what this machine will do is lay down a line with one extruder and then bring over the next one to lay down another line. And if they're on top of each other, then that axis is calibrated. If one line is left or right of the other, then you adjust the offset so that the lines can then be on top of one another. So first, when calibrating the x-axis, it draws a line in the y direction, and then it draws another line over the y direction using filament. Looking at mine, I, I can't honestly tell. And just remember, this was on a properly calibrated bed. Now the two lines that were extruded for the Y axes kind of looked similar. Now remember, these are just calibration lines. They should be really easy to remove from the print bed. According to the machine, it is properly calibrated. And so it's time for me to start a print. And I thought, why not start a CHEP calibration cube and why not do it in duplication mode so that each extruder is printing the same thing? Flash Print 5 is the slicer that I used for this machine and 
it defaults to using a raft for all prints. I just left the defaults on. And even with a raft, it was nearly impossible to get these things off of the build plate. I obviously had to find the right tool for the job. That escalated quickly. For an anti-scrape bed, this is seven shades of ridiculous. Perhaps an interface layer is needed. The machine did ship with some purple glue stick. And so I thought putting it on there might let the prints release easier. Now, in this case, the prints were a little bit easier to remove from the build plate, so the glue stick did provide somewhat of an interface layer, and I still had to use a scraper, so this anti-scrape bed is bunk. Next, I thought I would print the Flexi Factory Dolphin. It's an amazing little model, and I was able to split it up into pieces and bring it into Flash Print 5 so that I could assign the left and right extruders to the different pieces to make it multicolored. Flash Print 5 did default to a raft, and because this was a dual color print, it defaulted to an ooze shield around the print. Now, the ooze shield was really difficult to remove, and I only cut myself once, thank goodness, but the raft is essentially fused with the model, and even though the print quality on the model is pretty decent, I cannot finish getting the raft off of this. I'm really sad about this though, because the model looks really cool, but the raft is fused to it. Now I'm using Flash Forge filaments and I'm using a Flash Forge slicer with Flash Forge slicing profiles on a Flash Forge made machine. And so I would assume this should not happen. I've had some great experiences with Flash Forge 3D printers. In fact, the, the original Flash Forge Creator Pro is 100% the reason I'm here right now. Also, the Creator 4, this giant beast of a machine that's shipped in a crate. I've been having a ton of fun with that machine and I really can't wait to show you more of that. Unfortunately, the Creator Pro 2 falls far short of what's acceptable for a 3D printing experience. The bed should at least be removable from the factory. That makes a lot of sense because if a print is ever stuck too much to the bed, the amount of scraping and hammering you have to do will throw off the bed level and you'll have to go through the leveling process all over again. And let's be honest, leveling your 3D printer after each print should not be a thing. I am disappointed! At time of filming, it's $649 US, and that's on the Flash Forge website or in the Amazon Flash Forge storefront. But at the end of the day, um, if you really, really want this 3D printer, find uh, a third-party bed system for it and, uh, maybe find a filament that works and then further tune the slicer profiles in flash print five. Um, but at $649, you should be able to take uh, a 3d printer out of a box, turn it on and use it. And it just goes. That is my extremely unfortunate experience with the flash forge creator pro two. Now remember, the original one is what got me here and I've had great experiences with Flash Forge machines. I just think Flash Forge missed the mark. What do you think? Do you agree? Or uh, perhaps you have one of these and your experience is different. I'd love to hear about it. Why don't you leave that down in the comments below? Uh, if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Print all the things. And as always, high five.